Yes, we can start. Auntie, you can. Okay. Lead us. Good evening, everybody. Let's pray. And so, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for another day in your presence. We thank you for another evening in, in the study of your word tonight. Father, Lord, we invite you, Holy Spirit, we ask you to take preeminence of tonight's teaching. Teach us yes. what you have in stock for us tonight and for those who are going to be tuning in for this service tonight. Manifest your glory in our lives with tonight's teaching. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to quickly go through um, the question and answers for last week's teaching, which was on lesson 18 on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So I'm going to run through the questions right now. And for the question with this teaching, we have one question which says, mention some of the benefits, some of the reasons for Thanksgiving. And we can find the answer to these questions under lesson outline one. And the reasons for Thanksgiving, uh, there are about six questions, six um, points, pointers there. One is Thanksgiving is a command. And then number two, believers request to start and end with Thanksgiving, referencing Philippians 4, 6. Another reason for Thanksgiving is we thank God for victories over battle, battles of life as reference to Jonah 2, 9. And another point is it is important to thank God for his mercy and divine provisions. Also, Thanksgiving is offered to God for his miracles and restoration. And, and, the, and, the, and, and then the primary reason God created us is in his image or is, or is for fellowship. So Thanksgiving for praise and for joyful heart. So any one of these answers that I've just mentioned, can be used to answer this question number one, and that will give you two marks. So second question says, why is ingratitude dangerous? Why is ingratitude dangerous? We can find this in um, this answer under a uh, question, under the lesson outline two. And um, some of the answers that, we, that can be used is that one, a, every act of ingratitude comes with dangers, which are like risk of losing the existing blessing, salvation, and, and heaven. And also, one other, you know, um, a danger of ingratitude is limiting one's blessings or, or, or un answered prayers. Another point that can be used could also be it could result in emptiness and sorrow. So, any of these answers can answer that. Um, question number two. And that also will, will, will give you um, two marks for that. The third question is make a list of six benefits of being grateful, of being grateful. And the answer to this question can be found on the lesson outline one. And um, the answers here are, I'm going to just quickly read through them. A says, thankful people receive answers to prayers, that's the benefit. B says, thankful people enjoy abundant provisions, referencing Mark 8, 6 to 8. C says, people, ex thankful, uh, um, another be benefit of thanksgiving is people who experience, people experience deliverance from bondage. Another benefit is that thankful people are peaceful, and joyful, and we reference Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Another benefit could be, is, could be thankful people enjoy divine presence. And that was referencing Psalm 22, verse 3. Another answer is thankful people also experience complete restoration and wholeness. And another answer can be given under this also that thankful people enjoy victory without a fight. And that was referenced in 2 Chronicles 20, 21 to 23. This last uh, question will give six marks and in total, 
we have two, two plus four and four plus six, 10. So those are the answers for last week's questions. Thank you very much. I hand over to the staff for, for today's teaching. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to Bible study. Today's topic is quite an interesting one. And um, it's one I really need us to, to have our thinking hats on. And um, we're going to deliberate together on this and see if it's even a possibility that we can have such. The topic is political dominion. Political dominion. So um, it would, I would enjoy, I would really want it to be a discussion, really. Um, and don't be too spiritual, just, you know, let's um, think about it and see if there is a possibility for such to actually happen. It's actually made me begin to think a lot. And I'm thinking, is this a possibility in this present day and time? The opening prayer here says, Father, help me to understand the dominion you gave man from the beginning. Help me to understand the dominion you gave man from the beginning. And that's quite important um, because we, you know, there's something we say quite often that we are not of this world because everyone is at home and we tend to go back there and all that. Um, also, uh, something we've picked up from the Bible is there is a prince of this world. Is there's a prince of this world, you know? And I think sometimes that has kind of separated us as Christians from the world totally in so many aspects, particularly in politics. So Christians don't really go into politics as such. I was discussing with my wife, just regarding, just, you know, when we will listen to the news and something happened and um, it was, you know, about, I think, what happened in the US where uh, President Trump had some documents that was that he took to his property, that he took to his after the election, you know. And then the old Democratic Party was shouting, oh, it's wrong, it's this. The FBI actually raided his house to get those documents back. And the exact thing happened to um, the vice, the president, the President Biden right now, you know. And, you know, I think something she said was that politics is a dirty game. There is no way a Christian can be in politics. Those were awards. I think what brought that up was because they found out about these documents on November, shortly before the, the midterm election, but nobody mentioned it. Everybody kept quiet about it until after the election. We're just having a discussion about that. As I said, ah, it, it, politics is dirty everywhere. There is no place. Now, the question is, is it a place for a Christian? And that's what we want to really discuss today. To do that, we'll read a memory verse from the manual. It's Revelation 5, verse 10. Revelation 5, verse 10. If we are ready, we take that together. I think we can see it on the screen. One, two, you can unmute, and then um, after two, we take it. One, two, go. And I have made us unto our God, God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Revelation 5, 5, 10. And that's quite important for us to see that. It says, we have been made kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So it's saying that we are not just here to pass the time. We are not just here to just follow the crowd, or let the prince of this world, you know, do whatever. In fact, we are actually kings, not even prince. We are kings. And potentially, we should have dominion, even over the sphere that we are in right now. Bible passage, Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. I want us to be thinking about this. Can Christians duly have political dominion. Genesis 1. Genesis 
26 to 28, and I read. Then God said, let us make man in our own, in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. I read it again on what I have on the screen here. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created him. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, and that mandate was for man. That was before man actually fell. Man was given dominion over everything, over this earth. Now, if not for the fall of Adam, we as Christians would be in authority. It was the fall that took away the dominion from Adam, you know, and it was given to the devil. Then he became the prince of this world. And we saw that when he, when he was tempting Jesus, he said he would give him everything that is, he would give him everything that exists, you know. And thank God that Jesus came back and he wrestled the power from the devil and he gave it back to the Christians. So why don't we then have political dominion? Why, you know, why isn't the general overseer the president of Nigeria or something? Why? Why aren't we in politics? You know, I'll read the intro. He said the, the word dominion means rule or power over. God has sovereign power over his creation and has also delegated the authority of dominion over the works of his hands, Genesis 1.26, which is what we read. However, some Christians are passive and do not see that God wants the church to take charge of and revamp their society. Instead, they only see the command for believers to preach the gospel, as in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, and wait for God to implement social reforms himself. Does anybody want to say anything about that? About what we just read in the intro now? Whose responsibility is for social reform? Is it our man? Company. Is it? Yes, go on, please. I believe it is our responsibilities as, as Christians because the Bible says, number one, occupy till I come. How do we occupy till Jesus come? then Jesus has given us authority and power, yeah? But um, just like the question you asked, why is it not the general of us? They have been the president of the, um, the nation Nigeria, for instance, or one of the Christians being over the um, nation of UK or any nation. It's because, number one, I believe you have to be called. I'm not saying Christians are not called. But I think we need to know what our calling is. When you know your calling, then going into it with the understanding that God will back you is something different. And like you said, your wife mentioned about politics being a dirty game. Then we can say head, head, being a head, headmaster is also a dirty game. We can say being in the um, police force is a dirty game. Tonight we were listening to somebody that was in the force and had been raping people for 20 years. So in any, um, in any organization or any career, there are bad eggs. But should that deter anybody from going into that career? I would say no. So reforms will not happen, especially for us Christians. We know how to pray. Thank God for prayer. You know, but we have to also act on the prayer. We can't just pray. We have to act and pray. 
The Bible says, watch and pray. Part of our watching is getting into there and cleaning up the whole politics or whatever it is. Go. That's me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I, I, you, you, you are right to an extent. Um, but I want to believe there are Christians in the police as well. Is it that we are not doing a good job in every sphere that we, that we are in? You know, for a policeman for 20 years to have been doing something like that, and nobody could say anything about it. You know, Sorry. can I just add something? Um, I just want to correct something. In any career, like I said, they are bad eggs. So, matter of fact, that there's one man or 100 men or women, women in the police doing something wrong does not mean. It is wrong to go in. So you as a doctor, lawyer, whatever your career is, there's also bad egg in every fair of life. The mere facts, Christians are there. Even some Christians are, doing, are the wrong people in these careers because we're the one that they will say we are working nine to five and we will get to our desk at 9.15 and we will still live at five. So let's, let's be realistic here. And it's been about... In any career, they're bad eggs. And I'm sorry, sometimes the Christians are the bad eggs. Okay, and, uh, yeah, and, and I think that is part of the problem. Because we cannot say distinctly who a Christian is anymore. You know, I, I think that is where the problem is. We, you, there is no particular distinction. In this part of the world, maybe in the Western world, maybe, maybe in America, um, there is some semblance of it. It's not even politically correct anymore to say you are a, um, a Christian. You know, how do we now have that dominion? What I'm saying is there is a lot of work to do because we've been on this earth for a long time. They've been Christians since the time of Paul and, you know, from the beginning. But there has not been any political dominion in any place so far. Fire. Yes, sir. Okay. Um... I think I, I want to bring us back to your question, really. And I, I think the question is, as Christians, can we be in politics? Is that it? Or can we have... Yes, why, why, are we not why, having, are we... why are we not dominating that area as well? Because yes. the Bible says yes. that we ought to dominate. Okay? Uh, from, from my angle, I would say that um, um, politics or government, God has a hand in it. Uh, if you look at um, Romans chapter 13, it says, let every soul be subject to the government. Romans chapter 13 from verse 1, it says, let every soul be subject to the governing authority. For there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So again, when we look at that, when we look at that, you could tell straight away that God has a hand in politics. I believe God wants us as Christians to be in politics because the Bible says that we are meant to dominate. But the problem then arises when a Christian gets in there, that Christian must be prepared to be different from the norm. The issue in there is when we get in and then we're not different from the norm, we begin to do exactly what they're doing in there, then there is no difference. But when a Christian goes into politics, that Christian must be prepared to stand out. Where if people are doing cutbacks or getting, taking bribes or whatever, that Christian going in there must be able to say, well, I'm going to be like this. I'm not going to accept bribe. I'm not going to cut corners. I'm going to do what the law says to do, and I'm going to do it well. Because again, the Bible says here, so which also means that when the Bible says there is no authority except from God and the authority that exists are appointed by God. So which means that even the person in there that is corrupt or whatever, ruling at the moment, God allowed that person to get in there for a reason, for a purpose. So we're actually, if we're called to dominate, it, we should be dominating every aspect of the world but of course christians we shy away from going in because we always think it's politics is a dirty game yeah 
Absolutely, sir. And I think um, this topic is beginning is to allow us to begin to think what we can do different. Because we need to have influence in every sphere of life. We need to be present in the room when decisions are being made. Or else we will not be in the problem we are in now, where the laws are changing drastically against the Christian. And, you know, if we believe that this world, God created everything, then he wants us to have that dominion. So but it doesn't seem like we are. And let me go to the, the theology. If we don't, is, sorry, if we don't take part... Issue. Sorry, if we don't take part in the decision making, those decisions that are made are going to end up affecting us. Yeah. So we ought to be in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just to add to what the Pastor was saying as well, God wants us to be able to relate to one another, relate to Him and relate to one another. Christians, most likely, when they get into the political realm, they don't want to relate to those people simply because of their ways of life. Yes, ways of life will be different, but God wants us to relate with one another. Mm. And if we don't relate with one another, then it's not a done, it's not a done deal. That's what I just like to add to that as well. Um, Talk about I mean, what Pastor said. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, so we, just wanted to add, to... sorry, sorry, go. Uh, you no, know no. what, Ma Michael? Don't worry, don't worry. Um, sorry, we will discuss. I just let me quickly go through the lesson by what. Then we would, okay. we would have we open up the. Uh, but I will be quick about the uh, um, the the intro. Um, so the theology. This is what really probably I, I guess uh, the the people are beginning to think that what has caused it is there been a reason from the beginning that we've not been able to take our place according to the way God has planned it. So the theology of dominion refers to a line of thought with regards to the roles that Christians should rule all areas of society, personal and corporate by the law of God. Now, actually, I think the constitution that we have now in most um in most democracies, actually, stem from the Bible. The laws that were made from time immemorial, and then the Romans, and then um, uh, the West, which is the England colonizing most most of the world, and all that, and they've given them the you know, is it that you are a democratic state or you are um, a totalitarian state? Most democratic states, they for the West, maybe for America, US, Canada, and all that, it stems from the Bible. Thou shalt not kill or kill and be killed. Mostly everything stemmed from the Bible. The morals that were used in creating those constitutions stemmed from the Bible. So that would have been a win. However, we are in a situation now whereby all that is being repealed because our influence is winning. All that is being repealed. Is why so many laws can be made. It's why the law that's happening in Scotland now is actually trying, it's being, it's being made, you know. So, but if Christians were supposedly in positions of power and authority and, and influence, they would be able to hold sway over a lot of things that happen. This belief is based on Genesis 128 that God says we should be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and have dominion over it. So it is a divine mandate to claim dominion over the earth, physically, spiritually, economically, politically. Luke 19, 13. This theology idea about Christians having political dominion has its roots in God and reality. So if we believe that it is God who created man, then it would make sense that God's children should be the one uh, that holds sway in politics. The importance of justice. God is a just God. He is a just God. The Bible itself tries to give us the moral code that says that, you know, you have to do good. You have to live a life that is pleasing unto others. Do unto others what you expect to be done unto, unto you. God will give justice. The value of freedom.
We live in a time, you know, the children of Israel were enslaved for a long time, but that was due to their sin. But if we have a community of Christians or a group of Christians that are following the way of God, they will value freedom and would want freedom to be given to everybody as well. So people will not be unjustly, I mean, would not be in prison unjustly. We will follow the laws of the land. A very controversial thing, personally, this is my personal opinion. I might, I might be wrong. A very controversial thing, I think. I, I, I don't know, but I think I'll just say this. I don't think they should have repealed the death penalty. That's my personal, that is my personal opinion. I think that penalty should still exist. You know, we can discuss that later if, if, if um, anything, because you watch a lot of all these documentaries on, you know, somebody will just come up, kill an entire family, and then it will be in prison for the rest of your life, and it will be after 20, 25 years. The family, the family is dead. And nothing seems to happen, you know. But anyway, that's just by, um, by the if way. You start, if you start that discussion, you won't leave here until next year. No, no, no. It's just, it's just by the way. Well, <laughs> but, but again, at the same time that you said that, if somebody is wrongly accused of committing a crime, killing someone, and there's death penalty, they will have killed the person before finding out that they didn't do it. In instances yeah. where somebody is mistakenly sent to prison, after some time, they do an appeal and the person comes out. So, I think, yeah, has, you are, you are right. Decide. Like you said, if we start it, we won't end it. But I think the solution will be will be only people people who only who, probably you, you catch them red and it, that you know exactly are the people you can actually do that. If you don't know for sure, you can't. You know, no circumstantial evidence will be taken into into country. It's got to be clear that this person did it. But let's not, like you said, um, it's a very funny discussion. And it, it, I don't know. So, a rich understanding of the human person as created in the image of God. You know, the fact that Christians are made to flourish, and we are called to an eternal destiny. So, which leads to the fact that we don't take the lead in certain sphere of life but i think this geology is saying that because god created us and he gave us that dominion he has passed down the authority onto us to influence the world that we are in in the way that god would want and it should be christians that are in power in most not particularly in power maybe not in power but should have a major influence in decision making when it comes to right and wrong when it comes to laws that are you know um when it comes to justice when it comes to freedom because if we are not there the morals will change and it is changing you know red is now black there's no clear cut you know it's no it's no longer white 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 is black now black is white and a lot of things are happening. A lot of laws are being repealed on a daily basis. And, you know, the, the question is, what were we looking? What, what were we doing when those things were... We were not in the room when they were making those decisions. If we were there, probably we would have been able to influence certain things. As a question says that, um, why some believers do not take the lead? But we'll leave this question to the end. When I finish, then we will have some time to um, dis discuss. So the second outline says uh, Christians have political dominion. And, and I think this is trying to explain maybe this is why we, we've not really been able to take that position that we should. It says the political non-engagement and apathy of Christians of the early church could be traced to the fact that Israel and some Gentile nations were under the colonial rule of the Roman Empire and Christians were taught to be in subjection to the authorities that, that be. At best, they were to pray for those in power and could not participate in politics of their time. Now, this was actually, th this is a possibility that that is the reason why we've not really been, you know, because the, the theology is coming down from the early Christians down to us, from the Peters and the Pauls 
of their time. At the time when the early Christians started, they were under Roman rule. This might have been responsible for why Christians hesitate to be actively involved in the politics of our day, whereas the God we believe and serve is interested in the way that the world is governed. That could be true. However, personally, I think what, what I would think should be is that even if we are not in direct rule, we could have the influence to make those decisions. We could have enough people in power to make the decisions favor what the law of God says. And I think even if we look back, Christian, Christmas itself was as a result of uh, a Roman leader becoming a Christian because Christmas was a pagan um, festival that was on on the 25th of December. And I think one Augustus, I can't remember his name, he gave his life to Christ. And then it changed the pagan role to Christmas. That was influence. You know, however, how it has been set up now to mean different things now. But at that time, because it, gave, it, it was a Christian idea that, you know, that came about. But, and that was influence because you, he gave his life to Christ and then he was able to do that. If enough people were affected by Christians or enough people were, so imagine, Rishi Sunak is in, is in power, and there is a Christian as a secretary, and is in that room at that particular time. Yeah, whoever that would be would, would probably offer an advice, and if he has the wisdom of God, it would be taken into place. But we don't get that far. That's the thing. We don't really move, move that far. What this is trying to say maybe is because, you know, from the early Christians, they were, they were under the Roman rule is why they've not been able to take their dominion or they've not been able to make any um, adjustments to the uh, rule of the time. Then in the, verse, in the third point says, Satan stole the keys of dominion when he deceived Adam and Eve. That was at the beginning, you know. Uh, what we read in Genesis 1, 26, 28 was when God gave man the dominion before Adam fell. Then after that was when Adam fell, but Jesus now has come. And in Matthew 18, 19, can um, Sister Becky help me read that? Matthew 18, 19. So Matthew 18, 19 says, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on her, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 18, 19. Okay. And it says, when Christ gave the keys of the kingdom to Peter, it was a sign that dominion had been returned to man. Verse, for the fifth point, says, it is our job to take back what is rightfully ours. It is our job to take back what is rightfully ours. Political dominion is a must for Christians and not an option because the earth is our place of dominion, not heaven. Psalm 115, verse 16. Sorry, sir. I think it's Matthew 16, 19 we're meant to read. So, so what did we read? 18, 19. Oh, yeah. sorry. Can you read 19 for me, please? Yeah. Okay. 18, 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yes, and that's key. And he's okay, saying that the devil took the keys of dominion before, but God returned it to us. Mm -hmm. He said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and what you set loose is also set loose. Mm -hmm. um, Psalm 115, verse 16. Uh, I said the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. It says the most for Christians are not an option because the earth is a place of dominion. Christians must occupy strategic political positions to be at the ends of affair to exert positive influence. Positive 
influence. The teacher, okay. So it also says that it is true that we belong to a heavenly kingdom that is not of this world. And I think that's one thing we've always said, this world is not our own. We are still numbered among the people in this world and are subjected to the rules and system of its government. Because whatever decision is being made could, will affect us and would affect the mandate we have been given on this, on this earth. You know, going to the earth and tell them about um, Christ. So, so it is our best interest to be in position to make things work out, you know, for the Christian or for God, that God's kingdom would come on this earth, not until we get to heaven. And that's the prayer we always pray. Let his kingdom come. The kingdom will not come. It's not magically going to descend. You know, it's, it's going to be something that would affect, that would have to do as Christians on this earth. It says, we indeed seek another home, a city with divine foundation, but that should not be an excuse to be nonchalant about our present abode and refuse to take responsibility for its governance. It is also true that the world is passing away, but we should not forget that we would also give an account of how it is managed before it passes away. It should therefore be of concern for Christians to be a part of high-level decision-making processes to ensure that justice is done. Biblical principles are upheld and the Christian faith survives and is preserved. As the salt and light of the world, when we engage ourselves in politics and government, we speak out for those who cannot speak and defend the rights of the poor and needy around us. Okay, that's basically the idea that we should have political dominion in practically most spheres of the world. And then somebody mentioned something, and I think this is a good solution, or it's something that is key in the chart. It says we can start at local level. So do we attend council meetings or pray for the councillors in our areas? We can make a change at every level in politics. The truth is it starts from the grassroots. Because those are the people that are actually going to do the, the, the voting. There's something we say in my language. The heirs of the king, um, the heirs of the king at home, the heirs of the king in the market, there is a man in, be in, in between. If for something to happen in the parliament, for Rishi Shunak to know what's happening in, in Stevenage, someone has to tell him. Mm. And he has people in different places, you know, he has councillors here, he has this person here, he has that. So he knows everything happening everywhere. If Christians are not in those places, we cannot influence those places. Number one, Christians have to be in the home first. They have to be in everything in our schools, in our counselors' meeting. And that's the question the person says. Do we go for counselors' meeting? Mm. Do we join politics at a local level? Um, there is a market back home in Nigeria. Uh, it's an electronics market. And they, you know, the seller is it's called um, Alaba. If you go there at one o'clock every Friday, what they do is they stop selling and somebody preaches and they pray for one hour. You cannot buy anything. The Christian there has actually taken dominion of that place. They, they have the influence. Nobody will sell anything in that period of time, one hour. All they do is pray. So imagine if we have Christians in every, um, you know, every little carcass, every little community. Um, if you have a neighborhood meeting and there are Christians there, we can't even pray in meetings anymore. You know, I, there was a time before any meeting is started, you have to pray. Um, maybe 20 years ago. There was a time in schools before we start when we do assembly, we have to pray. We used to have a, a little book, Songs of Praise, that we used to, even back in Nigeria, they don't do that anymore. The influence of the Christian is winning uh, in everything. I was even going to just borrow or actually ride on what you just said about, um, do we attend council meetings? In UK, we have a UK Christian party. 
Uh, there's a UK Christian party. Say if you don't want to join uh, other parties, think saying that um, they're, what they stand for is not what you stand for. But there's a UK Christian party and what they stand for is Christians working together to bring Christian concerns, goodwill, and action into the community. Education, they talk about education, business, and politics. So if the Bible is saying we should dominate, then we could start from there. Somebody talked about um, the um, grassroots. We, 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 we should start from there. Because if you don't start from the grassroots, you can't just go and go in the middle and expect someone to listen to you. So you must begin to influence. Maybe it's, it might be on your road, on your streets, in the in your school, in your children's schools. Start influencing from there. Go for school governorship, things like that. So that that will help. I just wanted to borrow from what you said. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I have a friend um, who was part of the governing council, you know, of uh, my children's school, and then it was Halloween time. And they had the governor's meeting and they wanted to do Halloween. And she said, no, why should we have Halloween if this is a Church of England school? Why are we celebrating it? You know, and she won. They didn't do Halloween that, that year. They do it now, but they didn't do it that year. You know, so, but she was in the governing council. That is it. I, how many of us are in any governing council of any school? We have to be in there, you know, and... Possibly what what they've said we we sit on the on we, we you know laws are being made on a drastic level laws are being repealed that would affect us. The other day I was listening to um, the Attorney General Suella Breverman, and she was saying that um, the work agenda in schools should not be enforced. She she laid out the law according to what should happen that the, the ed teachers and they are not in any position to um to indoctrinate children as low as five or seven that that's not their job she was saying that quite clearly and I'm, i was actually very surprised that where she stands on that because in 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 my mind i thought oh basically it's now in every school that you have to have a transgender ideology you you, you have to have an you know and she actually said no it's, it's not the law and we can see that happening in Scotland right now. The law is trying to be being changed um, when it comes to the transgender idea. In Scotland, you have to be 18 before you can actually make any changes. And then you go through a process before they change your the, 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 the recognized birth on your birth certificate. Once they change that, then you can now say you are now a man or a, or a woman. That was meant to be taken off totally, whereby just feel, feel like you're a woman. You don't need to make any, you don't, you don't need to meet any doctor. You don't need to have any diagnosis. That's it. And the UK government has said they're going to block it, you know. But it's only a matter of time before we lose all that. Because we are not even vocal enough to say what we, what we feel. Possibly, you know, looking at America and a lot of things that go on, is there is a clear distinction between, not maybe not that very clear, but there has been an argument of these laws that are being changed on a drastic level. They are fighting back, you know, that this shouldn't be happening. Um, I think UK is a very sensible country, personally. I think we, 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 don't, we, we don't follow what America does. And it's kind of clear, but all that, all that needs to happen is just a change of power. And we are not in any influence and everything will change. And everything you think you believe in or will go. So, but it's probably, I don't know, it's not something, it, it's something that should have happened a long time ago. It's something that we should have, we should have been setting up ourselves to be in influence, but we haven't. I, personally, I don't see, <laughs> I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how we can make that change. But I think this topic is, it wants us to begin to think about it as individuals. You know, what can we do? And and I think it starts from the grassroots, like um, Pastor has said. I have a question here. If you were in power, what areas would you want to make a change if you have the privilege of being in power? 
So if you have the privilege of being in power, identify areas where you would want to make a change. I think, I think you can throw that out. I think Michael was even about to say something. Yeah, yeah Michael. You can throw that out to everyone. I will, while Michael is not here, I will say it's hard to say. You might say that, I might say, I want to make this change. But when you actually get in there, you'll find laws, you'll find things that are just buried, which if I was campaigning, I would say, I'm going to change this. And then when I get there, I'll find out that, oh, there are these laws that doesn't allow me to do this, that doesn't allow me to do this. But they keep them quiet. And they know that once people are in there that want to change it, the law is already there. So again, really, it's it's getting to know everything and ev everything and anything. And then one can then begin. I think it would take time because you would then, are you, it's nice to pass that information down and on that, listen, this is what you're going to come against. This is what you need to do. Uh, that's what I would say. But yeah, I've been in places whereby you get there, you find out, oh my God, I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, I, I think one thing, one thing um, is that we don't really think about these things. And I think that's what this topic is trying to make us do, to think about it. If you, you know, look at this debate about abortion. Even though it's wrong, but until you find yourself in that, in that position, you, 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 you don't know exactly where it stands. You know, there is a clear divide right now mainly in America, probably here as well, um, that you, in some states, the Roe versus Wade has been, has, been, has been repealed in some states up to the time a child is born, you can, ab you can abort. Child has already formed. You know, even if you want to say, maybe it's a clumsy of self from infancy and all that, you know. But as Christians, have we really taught about this? Have we really taught deeply about it that, oh, you know, of course, taking a life is wrong. Have we talked about it? And, you know, one thing Uncle said, how do you repeal that? And what do you put in place to help those mothers that were going to be in those positions? Abortion is wrong, my opinion, you know. But until you find yourself in that position, you are a 50, let's say you are 45 years, you already have your four children, and you find that you are pregnant. What do you What do you do? Maybe your, your last one is already 12 years old. You now end up getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know? What do you do? You have the baby. Well, I'm sure you would have some doubts in your mind. You would think about it. Oh, maybe I should do this. You know? But, um, you know, I don't, I don't, we need to I don't even think... I don't even think that's grounds for... Abortion. It's for not. going that way anyway. However old you are. No, it's not. Exactly. Um, and what I was actually going to say along that line is when laws are made or when decisions are made like that, there's, it's just like when the people are saying stories, there's always two sides to it. So you can't just go in there and make a certain law. When, when such laws are made, not because I'm for it, but when such laws are made, it covers a lot of things. The life of the mother, the life of the child, what will happen if this woman gives birth to this baby? Uh, so all of those things would have been considered before such a law is passed. And that applies to any law. So, but one thing I, I want to just say to us is Christians in politics or Christians, we need to be in areas where decisions are made. Because when those decisions are made, I could be, that's why they say some people think, uh, I think, left or whatever there's a way that they say oh this person is thinking in a particular way our thinking are different the way when we look at things we look at things from different angles so i might come from a right wing angle you might come from a left wing angle but if all the people sitting making that decision are all right wing when they make the decision 
the decision will favor the right wing. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm coming through. So that is the reason why we, a lot of us or a lot of Christians also need to be on the table where those decisions are made. Because again, the Bible says to us that we should obey the, the law of the land. We should obey the government in the land. So if we're meant to obey them, then we need to take part in the decision, in those decisions. Otherwise, if we don't take part and they make a law saying that when people, you are not allowed to walk on the road after 7 p.m. in the evening, you better obey it. Because if you don't obey it, the Bible says that you are subject to be judged as well. So whether the decision makes sense or not, the Bible says to obey. So you better take part. Yeah. Someone, oh, so someone, I'll, just, something. I'll just read quickly. I'll just read quickly what we have on the chat. Somebody says, I want to make child care free for all children under 10 or working parents. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I <laughs> just say a couple of things? <laughs> Sorry, can I just say a couple of things? Um, you know, the Bible says that they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Mm. It's only the people that know their God that will do exploits. So let's just be realistic here. We mustn't go by what we feel on this topic. There's a way that seems right to man, and that way is of destruction. So if you are in politics or any um, high authority something, you need to go there and represent your faith. And when I say your faith, I'm not saying go there and say all of you are going to go to hell. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you need to know what the word of God says. And if you are the only one standing that is saying what the word is saying, you better be saying it. Because that is what happened to Esther. You are created and brought to this place for such a time like this. I think the problem actually is that a lot of Christians are mouth Christians and they don't, they, they talk the talk and do not walk the walk. God is looking for those who will go there and represent him, however difficult it may be. It might be difficult. Look at him, what's his name in the Bible? I've, oh God, I've forgotten his name. That was stoned to death. Sorry. Stephen. 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 You know what? You might be a sore tomb, but the truth is you have to go and represent Jesus where you go. And we all face these decisions on a daily basis. It might not be as a precedent. It might just be something that is happening in your family. Yeah. And they want to hear your views. Then you doctor it because you want people to like it. It doesn't work. The Bible says they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So when we, just like pastor says, when we go to these places, let's sit on those panels and tell them what we believe is right. It might be painful. It might cost you your job. I think I've shared it here where I work for local authority and they told me to take a young child for an abortion. When I say young child, without the parents' consent, a teenager, I refuse to do it. But some of us will think, oh, the mortgage has to be paid. I'm going to do it. So you know what? On a daily basis, we're being faced with these decisions. It might just be with you and your five-year-old. Your five-year-old wants to go and play soccer on a Sunday morning, and they need to be in church, and you take them to soccer. You know, we're all, what I'm trying to bring out is we all are facing these things on a daily basis. It might not be as the president of the United States of Africa or America or whatever. We're facing these things. And also, you ask the question, what would we do? Let's, you know what, let's not do something to tantalize our flesh. One, I personally, one of, and, and I agree with Dickin today, you need to get there and see what you find on ground. It, talk is cheap, really. Everybody can talk. But when you need to face up, that's when we know who the, the boys are and the men are. So what I will personally do is I will revamp the family um, process in this country. I'll give you an example. Pastor works in an organization whereby um, children have left home because they've maybe fallen out with their parents. This system does not reform these children. There's statistics to prove that most of the children that go into the care system end up in prison. So we're pampering them 
to end up in prison and cost the organ I mean the country more money. It's not meant to be so. So I mean, mine is family policies. It won't yeah, be child care, care, to be honest. But for me, everybody has a reason for doing what they want to do. Because if we don't yeah. deal with these things, it will come and haunt us when they become ham robbers or breaking whatever in the future. And God will help us. Amen. So can you give me 30 um, seconds, sir? Just one Bible verse. Sorry, we don't I'm, have 30 seconds. Okay, sorry. Go on, go on, go on. Go on, I just wanted on. to say that um, knowledge is very important before you get anywhere, right? One. Number two, before you go into a strong man house, you yourself needs to be strong. You know, where you're going is not a joke. You don't know what you're going to meet there. So you yourself needs to be strong. That's why, you know, and there's one king in, in Nigeria, you know, he became king there is, uh, you know, and all he's always done is broken down some shrine. Who's going to go, go and do that without, um, without being powerful? You know, is, is, you know, all these things that you just start hearing people crying behind some place that they do every year. They probably use someone that's pregnant and use them for ritual. He stopped all of that. You know, he broke down lots of things. See, it's not anyone cannot go and do that without being powerful. There must be a, a, a greater power backing you up. So if you're going in, in there, you yourself need to be strong. I, like um, the Bible verse, um, do, to do exploit there, you have to know your God. You have to be strong. You have to go in that place that, yes, I know that I'm ready. Not like, oh, I'm going to go there. I know how to talk. Like you always say, no, of course, you know how to talk. You have to become a lawyer. Not everyone. And also, if anyone that God has sent that you know is going in there, it might not be you, you're going to have to probably support. We might be a support system and say, oh, this person is there. Don't just say, oh, a Christian is there. Start giggling and laughing about them and making some funny jokes. You know, you need to probably be behind the scene supporting a Christian that God has chosen to be there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You, you also have to be in a position of influence before you can make an influence. So if you want to change things, you need to be in the right place to be able to change things as well. Amen. I think we are all absolutely right. Um, uh, and, and it's food for thought for everybody here, you know, because the decisions, even in your school council, they'll make a decision. So it is not particular. it's not Politics it does not end with the government, you know, the, uh, the judiciary and um, the legislature and the and the executive. It happens in your offices. It happens in the local council. It happens in um, your school governing board is actually a key place that we need to be in because the way they will teach children things that don't really that are wrong. We need to be very careful. Your school governing body, if you can be, I mentioned a friend of mine was in the governing board, and they wanted to do Halloween, and she put us put down, and they didn't do it for that particular year. But it's because she was in that um, council. But God will help us. It's, it's something we think about, and um, influence is key. Like Pastor said, we have to be able to influence the decisions, or we have to be in a position of influence um, to be able to put the laws of God in, in place. Why we take our offering, um, if you just know of anybody in, you know, that needs, I, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know anybody in power that's a Christian? Do you know anybody that needs, you know, just pray generally and ask God to help, um, maybe to help you, to give you the grace to be able to do the right things in wherever, in your sphere of influence, wherever you have influence, wherever you go to your school, in your work, has God to give you, give you the, give you the grace to be able to, to make an impact wherever you are. You don't have to be up there, but wherever you are right now, ask God to help you. And if you know somebody empowered as a Christian, pray for them, that God will strengthen them, that God would, you know, give them the grace to do the right thing. Pray, pray for, I'm sure there are Christians in the parliament. I'm sure there are Christians there. Ask God to help them to be able to make the right decision, that God should teach them the right way to go. Ask for strength for them. For those who are weak right now, ask God to give them strength. Thank you, Jesus. 
In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We'll take our offering. Uh, it's on the screen. We'll just take a minute to do that. Um, if you're watching online, you can make any transfer to that account. God will bless us to do that. We'll take a minute to do that. Then we'll pray and then we call it today. Let's pray on the offering. So Lord, we thank you for the offering of your people. We thank you that from that you've given us, we bring back unto you. We pray that you accept it. And we pray that you use it for your glory and for the growth of your kingdom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, for the announcements, um, we meet on Friday, uh, our prayer hour. Uh, from 9 to 10, we call it the ninth hour. Uh, feel free to join us on this same platform, the same login details. You'll be able to join us for prayer. And we'll meet on Sunday um, in the building for our Sunday service, uh, 10 to 11.45. But you can also join us on YouTube. God bless you as you do that. Um, I think that's everything. Can we share the grace? May the grace, grace of the Lord, but Jesus, Jesus Christ, 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 the love of God, the love of God, and the spirit of the Holy Spirit, Holy Holy Spirit. Holy be with us now and forever. Amen. 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 All the days of my life. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Let's go and influence our community. Mm. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Mm. Bye -bye. Good night, everyone. Bye -bye. God bless you.